because there were tripping hazards. And last year for months, I complained in meetings and also by emails that there was one sidewalk in particular that was raised two and a half inches. I pointed out exactly where the sidewalk was, um, just on a pedestrian lane just off of Miller Creek Road. And it was definitely a safety hazard for pedestrians and a liability to the district. So many of you, I think, know that I'm the lucky one that tripped over this hazard. Um, I had, I've been walking this pedestrian lane for years. Over a hundred times I've passed by this race sidewalk and I've always walked around it. But this particular time I heard this really loud noise. There was a landscaper up on the median and he had his, uh, you know, noise machine, whatever it was going on. And I looked up for one second and over I went. Both knees very badly damaged, both arms scraped. So, I've been in pain for three months. I smashed both of my knees on the sidewalk, and this is the one that I had, had surgery on five years before, so that was really damaged, uh, re damaged. I've received thousands of dollars in medical. Um, treatments, went to urgent care, orthopedists, had x-rays, six weeks of physical therapy, and finally I got a cortisone injection in my left knee because it was not, uh, the pain was getting worse actually, not getting better. So I just wanted to say that all of this damage to me, 75 year old lady who loves to walk, loves to walk dogs, can't walk that much anymore, not doing any housework, not doing any yard work, not enjoying my life, laying down with my legs raised because of the swelling, and only because the park department failed to fix this uh, safety hazard and district liability. So I just want to ask you guys, and I know sometimes you listen, sometimes you don't, depending on who's talking, but I would like to ask, when the public raises an issue, especially one that can cause injury, I would like the district to be proactive, not reactive. Um, the hazard was fixed the day after I injured myself, after I came into the office and complained again, bleeding and injured and, and limping. So please, Listen to some of us when we ask for things like this. Think about liability. Think about injury to old folks. Just please just think about it and be proactive, not reactive. Thank you. Okay. Um, to say something. Thank you, Linda, for bringing that up. Luke, um, can you provide any other details or insight on that? Um, in terms of the, the wetland is talking about and what was done to remediate the situation? Uh, yeah, the area in question, which apparently was one of two different um, spots, two different walkways that had some raised lifts that didn't get addressed by the, um, the concrete company that we had hired, uh, probably because they were too much of a lift for them to be. Excuse me, quick. point of order? Yeah, um, actually, Luke's talking right now, so. I know, but it's a point of order. This is open time for the public. You just had your open time. I know, but 
He's not public. No, you had your open time. What I'm saying and, and, is, hold on a second. He's you not had public. Your, you, had, you had your open time. You raised a point. I'm getting clarifying information from staff. You can take that offline and do it. Uh, why? This, this no, no, is that's open that's, time. You don't allow discussion during open time. For but clarification, of staff, what you, say. you do. That's well, how it you works. guys don't. The board doesn't. Nobody does. I can, I can ask staff clarifying questions. If the public raises a concern or a question, that's completely within my rights. And it's not a timed situation. You had three minutes. There's no time limit on um, discussion between staff. Well, according to the Brown Act, that's, that that's not accurate. The Brown Act says there is a time okay, limit. This is not a two way dialogue right now, so I'm going to go back to Luke and okay. get the clarifying information. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so there were uh, a couple spots that the concrete company was not able to address because of the, the size of the, the lift of the concrete. And um, Linda had brought up the, the, the area in question um, to us. Our crew addressed one area that um, was on a separate walking path, not the one um, that Linda was speaking of, it's the second one down. And um, but we did go out, and they were able to uh, grind down the, the lip and add some additional concrete to smooth the slope of the tripping hazard, um, so it's no longer um, you know a, a raised uh, tripping hazard at this point. So that's what was done after that. And then, do we get um, annual inspections of the concrete that we manage for these types of situations? You mean, do we perform or do we receive from an outside entity? Either one. Uh, yeah, I mean, as things come up, that's that was the impetus for hiring the concrete company, like the concrete shaver company in the first place. Was we had a number of areas that were um, needing to be addressed uh, beyond our you know, ability to do that. Um, so that's that was. Which is part of an ongoing uh, areas that were identified, and we had thought that one had gotten covered, but you know, it needed to be followed up. So, is it an annual inspection? Uh, not officially. No. It's more of a, you know, as, as we see areas, we identify them. And, right. Um, so. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Can I add on to that? When we bring this company out, they actually, we give them a, a scope of area and they go through and identify areas as well and mark areas so that way they have a, a plan work. They send us a report that says we've discovered X number of cuts needed in this area. So in the last two years, uh, we actually spent a little over $15,000 with them having them perform this work. So they did half of it uh, in the more uh, high traffic areas the first year and the other half the second year. And just add on, the one thing we did not receive from that company was identification of any of those areas that they ended up not being able to address. So that's where we had a few spots that we assumed were taken care of, but we didn't, they didn't tell us, oh, we weren't able to do this particular spot, this particular spot. So that's something I would have hoped to have received from that company, but they didn't give us a report on that. So Right. Okay. Okay. Move on to item number four, the draft minutes of the June 25th Park and Rec Commission meeting. Waiting for approval. In there. Uh, motion to approve. Motion to approve. I'll second. Three of us in favor. Aye. Aye. Right. Item number five, the uh, draft minutes of the July 9th board meeting for our review. Any comments? No. Alright. May I ask a question? Okay. Um, I'm kind of curious about this one because it's in the agenda every single month to say review and I understand what review means but none of you made any review comments 
or any, I mean, you just kind of looked down at the draft minutes and that was it. So I, I was kind of wondering why this is in here that says review. Maybe you could just ask people if they reviewed it. Why, why is it a review item if nobody is reading through it, reviewing it? We received we've, it last week. we've been reading it since last week and we're familiar with it. If we oh, you all have been? It's posted on Friday. We try to be prepared when we come to the meeting. Oh, yeah, I understand you're, you so try. If we, if we have questions or comments, we would express them. If we have none, then we don't. Okay, so I just was wondering, maybe no questions, no questions, no questions, no questions. Okay, just uh, detail, I'm detail oriented. I'm just wondering because it seems to be a moot issue. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to item number six the uh, Park and Recreation Commission bylaws. We have a proposed amendment seeking approval on it. This was from uh, last month's discussion about. Uh, our inspection of park and recreation facilities and how we choose to address that and, and our options. I think staff has put together, as you can see, what the uh, current reading stated and what the proposed, proposed amendment states. Um, any comment on that? Well, I would. Um I wonder if it makes sense, I don't know if it's true. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I wonder if it makes sense if we were to change the uh, current physical inspection and or receive reports. It just as a clarifying piece to add to that amendment. If people feel it's needed. Yeah, I, I think that would be a good modification because we're, we're not ruling out mm -hmm. that we make physical visits. Would you want to do them both in the same year? It seems I, like it's, it's, I, I would say it would be on the recommendation of staff too. I'm needing to go out to address an issue. Okay. So that's why it's in the bar. That's easy to so Just, just the one word there. Really yeah. I think it makes sense to me, and and then you'll uh, just follow up the side note there that staff does not have time to make these presentations during the summertime so that they will fall and come in the off season. I think that uh, mm -hmm. it's just uh, makes perfect sense and there's no reason that things can't be addressed that way. Mm -hmm. It would be clear, I mean, I'm wide open to any changes of this language. I was trying to put something together that captured what was discussed by the commission last month put it in the context uh, and kept it the theme of the document, so I don't take any uh, offense if you wanted to read differently. I, 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 think it, uh, I think it makes sense to me. Yeah, I think for for me, the, the main concern is that we would have flexibility mm -hmm. and latitude to do either, not be committed to, to do a field visit if Luke was going to come and give a presentation, that would make sense too, but I, I wouldn't want to be bound one way or the other. If it states that. Yeah. I also think that's a good idea to move it flexible since we haven't tried this yet, right? To see how it yeah, goes. Right, right. it may turn out that doing the reports is more resource consuming than the actual going to visit. Yep. So maybe we should see how it goes before we walk yep. into something. So then we would uh, make a, I need a recommendation to amend the current bylaws, and then our recommendation would then go to the board for their approval. Can I, before you go there, uh, just so uh, I want to read this amendment out loud, so that way we're all, it basically say, conduct physical inspections of and or receive staff reports regarding park and recreation department facilities as deemed appropriate by the commission, maintain a list of recommended improvements as appropriate. I would move, uh, move to um, propose the amendment change um, with the edit. Do you need a second for that? Yeah, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 
Motion to approve. Um, can I slow you down for a second, John? Yeah. Um, you need to check out the public comment. Right. Right. Linda, did you have any comment on that last time? Excuse me, Linda? No, thank you. Do you have any comment on our next item, which would be the uh, item number seven, the facility spotlight our Marinwood Panhandle Park area? Any comment about that? I don't know what it is. I don't anything about it. It doesn't really say what you're going to do or what, I mean, is, was there a handout for that? Uh, no, this is a discussion that, or a presentation that staff has been putting together, but was not ready. Oh, it's a presentation. So, can we have the discussion? May I have my question after the presentation? Because yes, I have no may. idea what you're going to be doing. I thought you might have something to start with. I just wanted to check. Thank you, but after the, pre the pre presentation. Yes, thank you. All right. Uh, up. Let me know if I'm in your way. You're not, but if this is too loud. Um, oh no, I'm deaf, remember? Well, that's. Yeah. So for uh, this first go round, uh, and this will brighten up in a second. I did a, a short report on um, the the panhandle as well as the mini park. I noticed on the agenda, it just I think it just says panhandle, but we've historically done those in conjunction. So I went ahead and um, did them both together. So hopefully that is uh, okay with everybody. Um, so for this report. Uh, looking at for both of these areas, we'll go with the, the mini park first and then I'll move on to the panhandle area. Just doing uh, a little bit about the current status of this of this facility. Um, recent and just you know, what the maintenance is, what the concerns are, um, recent projects that we have completed in that area, if any, um, planned projects uh, upcoming, and then um, bigger picture needs that we do or don't have for these areas. So I'll just kind of go through it and uh, let me know if anyone has questions as we go through. Um, pretty straightforward. So starting with the, the mini park. Um, the, regarding the playground equipment, uh, the playground is, I think, around uh, 20 years old. But uh, as things have been replaced, um, as, as things wear out or break, um, it's actually in relatively good condition. Our, our maintenance consists of tightening hardware as it gets loose, as um, things need to be, be put in, and occasional swing replacement uh, due to wear and tear. Um, and then we have vandalism addressing that. Um, it, the vandalism we were having for a long time has actually waned, and we, ha we haven't had any knock on wood. We haven't had anything in, um, in a while uh, regarding broken material or, or graffiti, so uh, we're hoping that that trend continues. Maybe those kids have moved on to another school. Um, and, and we don't have to deal with that for a while. Uh, we just got new fall material in early June, and that's uh, looking good. And uh, playground's been getting a lot of use uh, this season. Uh, for the park in general, the mini park in general, not just the playground, but um, our maintenance is trimming hedges, pruning, mowing, uh, blowing the paths, and then uh, weeding throughout by staff. Some of the challenges include um, uh, the drinking fountain constantly gets uh, filled with sand and debris, dirt from, I assume, kids, uh, maybe also pets uh, drinking out of the drinking fountain. Could be the um, wind. Could be the wind. Uh, could be adults, uh, for all we know. But uh, the drinking fountain often is clogged and, the, and staff have to go in and sort of plunge that out uh, regularly, which they do. And the weeds, uh, keeping up with the weeds is another one. That was a right. constant challenge for us in San Francisco, and it really depended upon the design of the drinking fountains mm -hmm. and how the, how it drained. And sometimes it was just a nightmare uh, for the plumbers to get the sand out. Um, 
I don't know when that drinking fountain needs to be replaced, if anytime soon, but to, there, there are better designs that um, ameliorate that kind of issue. Well, definitely I'll take you up on that if yeah. we get to the point, yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh, it hasn't required us to do too much uh, diving down into the plumbing. It's, it usually will we'll plunge through with a, with a standard plunger, right. so it's not a huge headache, it's just, it's just constant, so. But um, I'll definitely pick you up when we need to replace uh, any of those. So uh, areas that, and there'll be some photos coming up, but uh, improvement areas, uh, turf is we get a lot of wear and tear, and, and with the heat this summer, um, it's definitely patchy, and we'll be addressing that uh, after the summer programs end to uh, aerate and, and uh, fertilize, reseed. And then our path through the playground uh, needs to be, we need some more decomposed granite, and um, our border has sort of uh, rotted away, we'll need to replace How that. How often do you aerate? Uh, we aerate, um, it kind of depends on, on the state of affairs, but we try to do it a couple of times a, a year. So we do sort of a post-summer, and um, usually ends up being a post-summer and a pre-summer, a really aggressive treatment of the, of the turf. Sometimes more often if we can, can make it happen. Oops. Uh, just a couple of shots of the playground equipment. This uh, platform and step are the latest. Uh, we replaced those most recently due to the vandalism. They're holding up now. So recently replaced uh, some fall material, repaired some irrigation, and added some plantings in uh, June and July. We plan on doing the, the two things I just mentioned, turf, some turf repair and adding some more decomposed granite on the path, replacing the uh, border around that. Luke, can I? Uh, yes. Just to clarify, too, that the, when he says fall material, that's the wood chips. Yeah. Uh, and Victor, who is our current uh, playground inspector, certified, you know, and he's go through, he knows the exact inches it has to be, everything else. So when we get down, go out with a big truck and fall out and fall in the turf. So. Thanks, Eric. As far as long term needed projects, uh, Eventually, we'll, we'll want to replace the playground. Uh, the, there's sort of a planned obsolescence with playground equipment, and, and these parts are getting harder and harder to source and more and more expensive to buy when we need to replace things. So eventually, I think it's going to make sense that we'll, we'll need to, to do something new, maybe do for remodel. But um, as of right now, everything's in good shape, and there's no immediate uh, need to, to make a change, but something to, to, for us to consider. What are you planning on um, that the playground would be um, yeah. Replace. Uh, there's no. There's no set plan. It's just I think um, something that uh, 20 years in, uh, I think she should be on our radar as we look at what. But you're thinking like is. two or five yeah. years, it would help with you know financial planning for for capital. Yeah, that's a really good question. I don't. I don't have a good gauge of of what the useful life left in this playground is. It'd be more. I think of uh, partly an aesthetic conversation of we're trying to do something different with the parks as far as. Is the playground safe? Do we have more years left in it to use it? Absolutely, but um, uh, if we can experience more vandalism and as we need to replace more parts, it does seem to be getting more and more difficult, and those expenses keep you know kind of increasing as we have to do that. So that might kind of depend on how often we're doing those types of repairs and replacement. I think. Have you had any cost estimates or conversations on? the ballpark number to replace it, it might inform the conversation as to how many years you're trying to squeeze out of it. Uh, no, I think that's something that I would love to, to bring up some people in maybe even to this to this setting to sort of talk about it. I know um, before Shane left, we had uh, pulled together a handful of just different companies and cat just catalogs, you know, things to look at, but not anything beyond that stage in terms of um, getting price points and, you know, uh, so. I think it's probably an okay time to start that process, um, but we have that, you know, this is sort of the beginning of that discussion as far as I'm concerned. If you're interested, no, no, no thanks for yeah. um, uh, We have a landscape architecture team at the county park, so we have recently replaced several playgrounds. Okay. They would probably be happy to talk to you about yeah. kind of the trends. A lot of it's going to more of like a nature play. I don't know if you've been to Stafford's playground where I, 
kind of like more natural logs. Yeah, I've been to some of those, and I, I would, I mean, I think everyone would love something along those lines here for sure. So yeah, yeah, I'll definitely hit you up with those contacts because, um, I mean, ours definitely is, uh, an, it's getting to be old school right. in terms of the design and, and everything. So, um, okay. mm -hmm. I should think. So I would like to. Um, one of the things we discussed last month was proposed putting the tours on the reports by type instead of by location. And I think we're having a discussion of, let's say, what is the useful life of this playground? The report that I would like to see potentially evolve, right? I'm not saying this is, but what we'd like to see is like we have a report on a, on a given month that is all the playground structures. What is their status? What do they look like? Where are they in this life cycle thing? What, are we, what was, what's the cost of replacing? All of that, like, you know, do, like old, so we can have an informed discussion yeah. on that. You know, similarly, like with tennis courts, we look talk at all the tennis courts at the same time, regardless of where they are in the in the in the facility, right? So, um, having one like this, and this this and this is great because we're starting this process. But having a one-hour conversation about one playground doesn't make sense from a long-term planning perspective, from my perspective. No, I think that's, that makes sense, and and I think I probably have very similar right. uh, presentation on on the other two playgrounds in terms of. Stylistically replacing parts, and you know, it's sort of the sort of the same story. But yeah, we could. I'm mean, happy to do that. L Lenny, you can have your comment at the end of this presentation. Excuse me. You can have your comment at the end of the presentation. Your three minutes. Okay. Um, I believe this is my last slide on the mini park specifically. Any other questions about about that? Then move on to the panhandle. Okay. Can I? Uh, okay, before we go, can handle Linda? Linda? I can talk I'm now. I'm right here? Yeah. Would you like to say something about the mini park? Oh, yes. Um, I walk by there almost every day, and it's very heavily used but by little ones and by nannies and really little kids. So I'm not really sure that in this particular instance the nature aspect of it would be you know, one and two year olds would be interested in that. However, it's always a popular place and everybody's having so much fun and they're laughing and talking and, you know, lots of little, little kids. So I just wanted to say this is a very, very popular park that I see almost every day. And uh, I think it's in great shape. Thanks. Cool. Um, Isabella? Thank you. Um, the last inspection we had in that area, the physical inspection, I think there was some kind of thought about um, fencing in the side to um, to kind of make it more enclosed and contain the little people, which That's I think correct, from, yes. from a motherly perspective would be brilliant, I'm sure you can relate. Uh, we did, uh, that did come up and, and we did discuss uh, some of the side effects of doing that in terms of accessibility um, and it, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, we sort of decided the main impetus for that was was to sort of identify the age group and, and have more of a barrier and to cut down on some of the vandalism we're experiencing. And as that has sort of waned, uh, I believe we sort of come to the conclusion that we would hold off until there was a need to do that. Um, there was a few more concerns with how to rope in the drinking fountain, how to make sure the, the accessibility was maintained with a, with a fence, where the gate would be, how it was enclosed. It turned out it was a little bit bigger of a process, and um, I think at the moment that was being held off unless there was a, a more immediate need to do that. As far as, is that, does that ring a bell with you guys? <laughs> I don't think I'm making that up. Yeah. Um, Maybe something to consider as part of a broader remodel. I'm just asking questions. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't have an answer. Anything else? Yeah, before you move on, and I brought it up uh, to the commission, and I think I brought it up to the board. Uh, we're in the process of pursuing grant funds through what's known as Prop 68 through the State of California Parks Department. Uh, one of the key things they're looking at, uh, amongst a lot of other things, but uh, don't quote me on the exact name of the grant. Particularly, I just refer to it as Prop 68, but it's you know, kind of access for all. 
Um, replacing uh, aging playground structures is certainly one of the qualified things, and I'm expecting minimum awards between $200 and $250,000 from this. Uh, and obviously, Luke and I would get together and bring the commission on the board, but I would think that one of the strong staff recommendations would be to use the funds for those purposes. Problem is, the grants have to be on one site, so we couldn't say hit the parks and Creekside, but since this is actually all one continuous, uh, contiguous parcel, where the mini park and the playground here at the main park is located, I am uh, fairly confident we would get that to qualify as a single site, because it's on a single parcel. Uh, so just talking about potential funding streams and everything, that is a huge That's great. jump in life. Yeah, there's a, I know there's a lot of different programs within Prop 68. Mm -hmm. One is Trails and Greenways, and there's right. all kinds of different ones. And one of the challenges for our community is that um, disadvantaged communities get higher priority. Right. Um, we don't fit that quite so much. You know? Right. But not to say it's not worth trying. Yeah, but I also think that that's why uh, I, I think we stand a good chance of getting it, but I think we stand a chance of getting it more towards the minimum award amount. Yeah as opposed to, to your point, the disadvantaged communities which are going to get much greater shares of the pie. But so far, the minimum award amount seems to be somewhere between two hundred and two hundred fifty thousand dollars um, I think it helps to have matching funds for that, right? So could measure A be used as a matching fund or something mm -hmm. like that? Any, any level yeah. of funds could be yeah. used for matching funds. Right. You know, as long as you're not matching state funds with state funds. Right. Okay, and that's still a ways out. Yeah. I mean, that's in the infantile stages of the state grant process. So we're talking at least a year or two. All right, so just um, regarding the panhandle, uh, gets heavy use all year round, but especially in the, in the spring, summer, fall months. Um, lots of different groups uh, out there every day. Regular maintenance by staff, um, they empty the trash receptacles, dog waste bags, cleaning out drinking fountains, um, and then basically keeping the foliage from impeding people on the path. Uh, and then every so often as the weeds get pretty high, uh, mowing the, the weeds in the big clearing um, just uh, past the maintenance shed. Uh, sort of what the staff takes care of in that area. And that area does post challenges um, in the rainy season. We've talked about it in the meetings. Um, but the, the soil is very compacted there on the, on the path from years of, uh, we used to have the, the fire department and the burn relay where they park all the fire trucks out here and have a big picnic. It used to take place in the fireman's picnic area um, back in, in the panhandle. And they actually used to drive the trucks out there on that road um, for, for decades. So. It, it's a big road as opposed to the, the more narrow path for the rest of the panhandle and stuff just doesn't grow there and that um, area does not drain very well. So we get the big mud puddles, um, a, lot of, a lot of just soupy mud in that spot. It's also a low point. So that, that's a challenge in the winter in terms of keeping that walkable. Um, and uh, there are plans to add, add gravel uh, to the path as we um, can, can finish completing that. Um, hopefully this year we can make that happen. This is the uh, coming down uh, towards the mini park from the maintenance facility. Um, recently, uh, flail mowed um, the weeds in, in the spot that's going towards the creek. This is that same area, but this is just that, that sort of wide, uh, compacted road where um, things get very, very muddy and, and wet in the winter time. It's an ongoing challenge for, for us. Yeah, what do those posts say? Uh, these posts, um, there's I can't remember how many there are now, but they're, they're currently displaying uh, information about the Miwok Indians. There's photos and, and little fact, facts listed on there. Uh, I don't know what this particular one is. From Miller Creek Middle School. Yeah. It's Stephen Nessel. Mm -hmm. uh, regarding the, we've talked about the sink the sinkhole and the compromised drain pipe underneath. Um, you guys saw in that last photo, we've, staff has fenced off the entire um, area from where the sinkhole starts 
all along um, to where the, the drain pipe um, lets off into the creek. Uh, it's, it's not clear um, how much earth is, is being sucked under into there, and so uh, we, we don't know if there's another one that could open up. So we basically line the whole thing and, and we'll keep that uh, blocked off until uh, we can get the sinkhole repaired, I mean the, the drain pipe repaired and, and repair that area, which um, we are in the process. Eric has more information on exactly where we are in that, but um, uh, we're still working on permits and, and getting that underway. But as of right now, the area is blocked for safety. So Eric, how is that issue with the county? Are they still looking at you to uh, cover the cost of replacing that, or sleeving that pipe? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. From as far as the county is concerned, they're not touching it. They're not going to take ownership of their pipe. And you're thinking forty thousand uh, dollars for the construction work. Yeah. And it will be done before winter. Uh, it'll have to be done and cured by October fifteenth. This is uh, that's your magic cutoff date for my fish and wildlife, and a lot of these they don't allow work to uh, happen generally after that date. Um, we're, the last one I believe I heard from was Fish and Wildlife who had a couple of questions about the proposed methodology and specifically a, uh, they wanted some further information about a soluble grout fill that they would be using at the bottom where it's compromised and wondering why that can't be regular dirt. Uh, my understanding is actually the grout had been previously approved in a different project through the water board and my further understanding is the water board tends to be the lead agency that the other agencies tend to follow uh, so we're just trying to get some of those ducks in a row because I believe it was Fish and Wildlife who had the question about why can't you use dirt. Uh, the simple answer was because the cement spin wouldn't stick to dirt. The uh, cement spin sticks to the grout filling that they put at the bottom they had concerns that the grout filling could go in there but again this was a, a product that was previously approved by the water board so it's just a matter of trying to uh, get all of that information to them and that sleeve will go from the creek to the property lines that back up to it and all the sleeve will go only for the portion that is corrugated metal piping the corrugated metal piping is approximately 75 feet. The entire pipe itself is like 190 feet, I thought it was, it, it maybe even longer. But the only portion of it that's compromised, because the others is a RCP pipe, uh, reinforced concrete piping, while well, this one is corrugated metal so piping. Just the just last leg they went corrugated. That's it. You're exactly right. And did you go to the NPC meeting for this one? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And this was Nicole Farley with the water board. Um, I would have. Uh, I I don't know the very top. Yeah. Yeah. I would have to look and see uh, the names of who was there for the different ones. But like I said, right now it doesn't sound uh, any. I don't think we've gotten any sort of feedback or pushback either direction from the water board at this point in time. I think the only questions have actually come from Fish and Wildlife. At which point now we have to circle back with the vendor because it was the vendor who had the information uh, from the water board that this was actually previously approved. So it's, it's trying to get a bunch of different hands to get the same information in front of each other. But you're not applying for a permit, are you? Yeah, we're going through the JARPA. You are? Uh -huh. That's what that's what came out of the NPC meeting. Yeah. We needed that's what to, they wanted. Yep. That's gonna be tough to get by October. Um hopefully not. Hopefully not. I mean, they know the circumstances that we're under. I mean, some of these, like, if this is the only question that they have, is uh, just the, the this grout fill versus, and they also understand the, the timelines involved, uh, and they also fully understood, uh, at least the representatives who were at the NPC meeting, my frustration with this actually being a district responsibility, or in this case, the responsibility of a landowner uh, for a pipe that we neither approved, accepted, nor installed. Uh, uh, they got it. Uh, so to answer your question, yes, it is. Uh, the work quote was a little under forty thousand. The JARPA fees are another few thousand, um, and then we're paying a consultant to help us put together the application and field the questions. Okay, Luke. Um, and uh, this is another shot just of the fence off area, the um, the sinkhole in its current status and be curious to see what happens in the new rainy season if we if things don't get repaired but that's where we're at right now 
uh, with that spot. Um, so in the in the I've been calling it the clearing in here, but that 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 larger area that we've just been looking at pictures of, um, just east of the of the uh, parks maintenance shed. Um, not a lot of things that can grow in that spot, so you see like this weed meadow or weed area. Um, the straw program, uh, which works with the, the middle school, they've been doing a lot of plantings um, out there of uh, native vegetation that, that does do well out there, and working with them to try to increase some of the um, uh, native vegetation in those areas so it's not such a barren waste land out in that one spot. But they've actually done a lot of great um, work this, this past couple of years. You can't see very well because of how much you want in the picture, but um, this, this is all uh, new plantings that have gone in from the straw program um, in the last, I think in the last year, mid to two years. And uh, these are just kind of beyond the, the spot we're looking at and uh, we're working with them to sort of try to keep kind of um, working on that area and, and keep things uh, native and, and sh prevent erosion and all the other things that they're, they're sort of working on in that spot. So happy to have them out there. Um, with that cause, and it's starting to look a lot, um, things are looking a lot better in the areas they've addressed. So they're planting trees there, right? They, yeah, yeah it's, it seems like it's mostly trees, trees, right? Yeah. 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 So um, depends what section they're on, uh, in the upper banks, there's yeah. more trees, but they're doing other types of recreation vegetation down in the lower banks, right. Right. Um, you know, trying to clear out non-natives uh, as much as possible. So they do, I think um, they come out a couple times a year for three or four days, uh, we, let them use our, our dump trailer, um, but they can make a lot of progress, looks like. It's just a shot of the fire of the fireman's picnic area, a couple different angles. Um, recent projects uh, in the Panhandle area, just the fence around the sinkhole. Um, uh, the staff have been continuing to add base rock to the path. The residents that have their houses um, up against the panhandle have been requesting repeatedly for, for more gravel as the people walking by and cyclists have kicked up a lot of dust and dirt and the area does get muddy. Um, the goal is to continue base rock along the, the walking path um, for the, the full length of the panhandle, just kind of getting a section as a, at a time as we um, have the time to do that. Uh, it's best when the the ground is wet, and so we'll be in that again as we get to the wet season. Um, and then taking care of tree trimming in the picnic area, fireman's picnic area, for uh, trees being overgrown or anything that's uh, dead limbs, etc. cetera, making sure we're keeping an eye on that. Can I ask a quick question about the gravel? Yeah, please. Have we considered any other um, options? And the reason why I ask is this gravel is notoriously slippery for bicycles and runners and that path just is used but for a lot of different athletics including a lot of middle school kids on bikes. So the more gravel we put in, the more likely, especially fresh new gravel, it's pretty easy to take a dive. Um, yeah, we, uh, that's a good question. We definitely have considered other uh, alternatives to gravel. Gravel has been used there for decades in that spot. so. It's there, it's embedded, there's a lot of it. Some of the areas are more, uh, you can see, the, the gravel's actually maintained a lot longer and, and some of it has either been covered by fresh dirt or sort of gotten you know, kicked out. Um, one thing the staff does do when we, when we put the gravel down is do make sure that the ground is, is moist and, and that's gonna set in and they do roll um, repeatedly over with a big you know, weighted roller to make sure that it's, it's not just like piles of loose gravel. So, and, and not doing it too, too thick, but that's definitely a concern when they're putting out there. They're trying to, to not have it be just a bunch of slippery, you know, piles of, of loose rock. It's more trying to get it embedded in the ground and to, to form like a, a, you know, more of a barrier. But um, the gravel seems to be a good long-term solution as opposed to wood chips, dirt, um, and when we have to get out there with any sort of asphalt type situation. But yeah, it's something we've, it's something we've definitely talked about. So we, we get that complaint all the time. Um, and what we use is um, three quarter inch called minus. So it's gravel, but with everything smaller than that. And so what that does is it allows the bits and pieces to lock together so you don't get the slipping, because it is super hazardous for bikes. Right, and, yeah. And, and runners and whatever. So um, I can, if you are interested in that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. you can get that instead. And, um, 
typically what we do is we put gravel down, then we put the three quarter inch mice over it, and then roll that. Oh, so kind of lots of yeah. yeah. No, we'll definitely be interested in that. I mean, um, anything that it's a good for process. Process. So this for yeah, I mean, in that situation, it's tough just because, like you said, it's so low lying and it gets saturated. I mean, the, the, really, like the only solution is to build that road up with this material so it's actually elevated, mm -hmm. um, and then you, you won't get that saturation. But that's a lot of material. Right. That's why we kind of been hitting it in, in like yeah. small sections, the worst spots. And then yeah. there's that balance between over over piling it, where it's just like a pile of rod, and then and then doing too sparse, where it just sort of Ends up absorbing it and disappearing, but yeah. So I yeah, I'd love to take you up on that, John, um, and talk about yeah, okay. that material. I actually thought that Shane was using three quarter minus. That, that was a recommendation I had given him a couple of years ago. Um, it's very possible that that's so, what I just yeah. determined. Uh, that's a new term to me. Uh, that could be what, what we're working with already. Uh, I'll double check with the staff. Yeah. So um, yeah, I mean, it's very possible that we, that's what we've been purchasing. But. I'll have, to, I'll have to get back to you on that. So, uh, this is just uh, the, the areas um, leading uh, uh, up towards the mini park of the, uh, the east. And uh, upcoming projects, just what we talked about continuation of that path, uh, continuing to work with the straw program for, for more plantings, and then. Um, Placing the compromised uh, corrugated pipe, and um, uh, that's basically um, basically it. And uh, is there any any questions about um, that point? And uh, also, I'm th being the first time around without a, a really uh, in-depth, detailed template, I would be absolutely open to suggestions from something that the commission would like to see in terms of more information, less, different, you know, so, um, you know, it's definitely just like sort of like the rough draft of what we guys think. Photos are always helpful. And then just like you, you showed kind of your short, short term needs and the long term. So we kind of get a sense of your priorities and, and what things you would like to see maybe we, we are challenged with in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Just one other question. Um, in terms of vegetation management, it sounds like that the resources that we have is simply simple and straightforward is the best case. That being said, is there any thought to just keep an eye on poison oak as it grows? And there's all those little trails up and down to the creek and the kids are all from the room and stuff. It's, it, they're pretty clear right now, which is really surprising actually. But just curious, as the vegetation is managed, is there any, you know, sort of um, consideration given to the management of poison oak in the area? You know, our, there's so much of it. Our staff uh, is really only able to, to try to keep it off of the, the, the walking paths and, you know, there's a lot of little kind of unofficial trails and, and they'll, they'll try to trim it out of there as best they can, but uh, mainly keeping it off the main paths and then if they can do more than that, absolutely. But as far as beyond just kind of keeping it from growing in where people are walking, um, there's just there's so much of it and we don't have you know, a lot of resources to, to, to deal with that on a bigger scale, but um, love, would love to get rid of all of that. <laughs> can, I, can I chime in on that? Yeah, please. Uh, when I was at that NPC meeting, I think it was the woman from Fish and Wildlife, uh, especially as you get down towards the creek banks and going out of the creek, the poison oak is actually considered a, a native vegetation and uh, it, it's a native weed right yeah, I mean it's, it's, right. it's everywhere. right and my, yeah. my point being is uh, technically we can't just go down through the creek banks and those paths and start clearing it out mm -hmm. no, they kind of hammered on me for that one there you go can't do, any, can't do anything easy on a creek bank and below that's one area where it's nice to have straw yeah, because they're very well knowledge. Uh, John Perry is very good at what he does. The old Blue Point organization is good, and they go through and do a lot of work and create it with a good learning environment. With the, uh, if you don't know what straw stands for, it's students and teachers restoring a watershed. Um, so they go in with very good purpose, and, it, and it's hard to tell because it is so dense through there. But uh, they've accomplished and done a lot 
of work down there all the way, you know, pretty much from the mini park all the way up and through and along the Panhandle area. And I, would, I, I wonder what it would look like if they hadn't done what they had already done. Another question, is there any, I think I know it's remember, is there any coordination with straw, like here are our areas we would like, like to give them guidance of what order they take the kids out? Or is it they dictate what they want to do and we just say, which is fine too, I'm just curious. In, and know, they just say, we're going to hit this area and you're like, great, right, what do you need? That's how it's been going most recently. And uh, you know, as I started to become familiar with that area more and, and you know, getting to know the, the program, um, I'm not sure historically if there's been uh, directed like, hey, can we address this? But I definitely would love to talk, talk to them and see what the, what the master plan is, what they're kind of looking at, because I'm not even familiar with what, what their end goal is and what they're working towards. Um, but that, you know, that's something we'll find just to become more knowledgeable and you know, share what, what we've been seeing and what they're doing. So. And one of the, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, I wonder if, as an invitation, we ask them to come down to us. Uh, yeah, we've had yeah, and we've had dialogues with John as well. Um, keeping in mind, you know, in terms of their project goes, one of the things that they they have limited time by which to complete these projects right. because you know these are school projects. Yeah. They're pulling kids during class time, so they're also trying to design things that are accomplishable. Um, so that way, kids can get a sense of uh, you know completion and accomplishment through yeah. what they're doing. Uh, which is why it's kind of you know, bite size each time. But they're very amenable, they're very appreciative, um, and I'm sure, and it, they don't dictate per se, but the, they certainly, when they come up with a new plan, they contact us. I've met them down on site, they kind of walk through, uh, want to make sure that we're comfortable with what it is. And to your point, for a lot of times, we're just so grateful that they're yeah. willing to come in. And, yeah. The, the needs far outweigh the resources by which to do it. So if they're willing to attack an area, uh, our, my, my primary response is how can we support it? Right. And our primary support has been that uh, we haul off the debris form. Mm -hmm. Which I think is a pretty fair compromise. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a good question. And I would definitely, uh, John's schedule's tricky. I think he would be a really good one to try to bring into one of these meetings. Oh, yeah. um, uh, especially as they're in the planning and thinking mm -hmm. stages of everything, uh, and I, he, schedule allowing, I'm sure he'd be one willing to. Okay, ask one other question. The yeah. the signs, the interpretive signs up there with the the Mewlock signage. I, I feel like I've seen it. I know mm -hmm. I've read them. I don't remember. Did they did they call that area out as a site where there was a mid in or? I think there is there is some information out there. I mean, the the, the the information does get switched out, so this hasn't been this current uh, set of, of signage has been out for maybe just under a year, I want to say. Oh. Um, but uh, I think there are some informational posts that talk about Miwok habitations or, or activity in the in the area. Um, but I don't know if I'm pointing to specific. You know, I think it's just in, in more of a generalized idea, but I haven't sat down and read through all of them for a while. Who, who creates that narrative? <laughs> oh, that's a great question. Uh, as far as I know, Stephen Nessel is the one who's been filling, putting the content in the signs, and I think he was originally working with the, the middle school, um, some of the teachers to create that. Um, but that's, that, I'm not sure what, what the status of that is. So we, uh, from a staff point of view, we maintain the the physical signs and, and replace hardware, et cetera, as needed. But um, as far as the content, that's, that's Stephen's been doing it for ten years. That's a tricky. That's tricky. Um, I have a, a dialogue with the federated tribes, and they typically don't want their sites acknowledged, and they don't want it exposed to the public. And I'm curious if we've ever had that communication with, this would probably be Grand Rancheria, the Grand Rancheria, Grand Rancheria um, if they want that. When I went through and saw the recent ones, I don't think any of them specifically call out the mid-in or anything right. like that. I think they're, they're more broad-based in, in history and talking about the region in general yeah. and the, uh, 
the tribes that inherited or inhabited the greater region. Right. It doesn't say if you go across this bridge, look to the right, you'll see a fence. Yeah. That's no, no, because you are you are a hundred percent right, John. That is the last thing that any of uh, them want. Even when we've had cultural studies done, the archaeologist is very uh, uh, careful not to provide locations. Oh, of, no. uh, you know, yeah. it's they uh, to your point, they don't want. Uh, for lack of a better term, uh, you know, artifact hunters or yeah. scavengers going through what they consider to be uh, historic and or holy sites. I, I think it's good that they're there. I, I think maybe just some thoughts, two things. One, make sure that it's not too specific to name or even point people or even acknowledge that there was a midden here. And then two, that maybe um, another thing that's come up in my conversations is that Native Americans typically don't want to be referred to in the past tense. They're still here. So if the language could be written in a way or thoughtful of peoples that are still here today. Yeah, like, so we've I, never had to do with the content. I know, but, but if we're putting it up, then we are somewhat taking advantage of The history of these signs, it's definitely, there's a, there's a, I don't know, Eric, do you know the, the story of where, like how these originated? Out there? Cause it's well, like, it predates me. Originally, this was a, uh, there was this very specific school teacher who was involved in it and he was also doing some science things and the signs originally were talking more about the biology of the immediate area. There was a loosely formed group, um, again predates me, known as Friends of Miller Creek uh, that Stephen Messel was certainly involved in. I don't know how active that group is by any stretch any more. Uh, this teacher kind of moved on. I don't think that the school has much to do with this uh, at all anymore. I think they kind of worked on other projects, but it was uh, it was definitely it was a biology teacher, I believe. Uh, and this is kind of secondhand stories that I got through Tom Horn. I think regardless of where it comes from, it right. signs on our land. Yeah, I don't we, disagree. We should control the narrative. I, I don't disagree. They were previously before this round of um, current content. They were previously pointing out uh, different like. Plantings, native plantings, and we right. were talking about features right. of that. That was really nice, actually. Features of the creek and things like that it made a lot of sense. I have a question. When we're finished, just a minute. In some, in a some minute. instances. Just a minute. Okay. When we're finished. I thought you were finished. Sound like it. I'll ask you when we're finished. Thank you. John, do you have an avenue that we could look at what's said and maybe? Um, see if it is appropriate or not. I, you know, I have a, I try really hard to build a partnership with Native American tribes and I have a contact. Um, it's very difficult to get them to review language. So I think, uh, you know, I would just try and not be specific and try and be I, the answer is no, I don't, I don't really have that, but <laughs> I, I walk the line of trying not to be offensive in how I uh, interpret these sites. In, in Marin County Parklands, we just try not to. We don't put up signage about it because we don't feel like it's our place to describe it, to interpret it. Um, if we ask them, and we typically don't get responses. What about the idea of maybe some of us taking a walk out there and just reviewing it? And I would hope you would be willing with your experience and expertise. And, and then at least we could be more comfortable either with what's out there or maybe make recommendations to staff with what we do. Sure. As a person. Yeah, I would be willing to do that. Yeah. And I don't want to consider myself the expert in that, right? But, but I, I think. But I think we should control the language. If, if we would maybe, without, I don't want to do a Brown Act meeting or something. But I think we have but also the option to just replace the contact with something else. Well, I, I think if we find what's out there isn't appropriate, then we would kind of make that recommendation that I think we can't just go ahead and start slapping what we want on there without. Yeah. Creating a lot of ill will. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Well, I, I don't mind it. I'm not trying to say like I don't want it to be community driven. I just want to make sure that it's a message that we all uh, can be. <coughs> so I was just thinking maybe a 
third option to consider is that the placard has a sign with the author and or say something like this is community driven, this is this content is provided by X. So it's where not the owners of the content or the curators of the content. Right? No? I, I don't know. I, 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 uh, that doesn't feel right to me. That I would agree have. that we can't just say we don't agree with this. Yeah. And so it's his fault. But, where, but how do we cross, how do we manage the narrative of, let's say, a fifth grade science class going out there and putting up sign about X, whatever, or a community member that wants to put out signs about why, and like, how do we say, well, a fifth grade could do it because it teaches things. Well, like, I'm not, I don't know how to I think we just review, review it. it. We just review it. Just look at it. That, that's all. I, I just don't think it, those should be a free-for-all where anybody can put anything up they would want. So maybe I, like you could get everything along with it. Yeah. May I offer a suggestion, maybe? Somebody reaching out to Stephen, because he's obviously the author of, of this and has been for a number of years, and maybe asking him to submit the prospective you know, next round of his project for the commission review. Um, I, I doubt that you all have objections to it, you know, if it's like about plants or whatever. And, um, next time something regarding the Miwok tribe would come up, then you know you would be able to catch it before it gets on the little thingy jigs. I, I, I would agree with you if we do find something that is somewhat objectionable, that you know, we need to develop that process so we can see before it happens. But if it's all benign out there, then yeah. We don't need to. I mean, we could staff could, could still make that request for future, just so it doesn't happen in the future. But I think we should see what it is first before we make any other recommendations. Anything else from the commission? Hi, Linda. Okay. One of the things I want to say is, first of all, I walk up and down the Panhandle three or four times a week, and the pedestals have really nice pictures of tools. Doesn't say where the tools came from, but underneath it says Miwok tools. Uh, they have pictures of huts and you know little tents and things, housing. They have um, dancing, you know, things like that. They have um, clothing. I mean, it's all. None of it, it, it says, this is a Miwok Trail, this is where the dead bodies are. In fact, I don't know if any of you were at the walkthrough that we had on the Panhandle where there was a lady who pointed out the 400 dead bodies over by the school. 400 dead Miwoks over by the school. Now, maybe she shouldn't have said that. But in any case, this was on a tour that somebody invited this person to come along. What I was going to say also is that last year, before the Miwoks, there were, I'm, I think there were wildlife, just information about wildlife, and that was really good. I mean, I really enjoyed reading about coyotes and all that. Before that, there was um, plants, and it showed pictures of what poison ivy looks like and poison oak and lots of stories about plants. Before that, what I think was wonderful is that the kids from Miller Creek Middle School actually drew the pictures of birds. They're, you know, each one of them had a bird that they chose to draw, and they had a nice little story underneath the bird. So this has gone on for years and years and years, and this is kind of the stuff that is out there. If you all want to know what's on the, the um, posts, I'd be more than willing to take a picture of every single one of them. I could send the pictures to the district manager, and then he could pass them on to you guys to look at. I don't think that's necessary, but thank you. Okay. And now, if this is the end of the presentation, there's one thing that was 
missing in my opinion and in my opinion it's one of the most important things that I bring up every single year. This would have been the fifth year I would have brought it up. Um, at the very end of the panhandle just before you get to the maintenance shed there is a pedestrian lane that goes from the western end of Quietwood down into the panhandle. And when you try to walk from the end of the pedestrian lane, you have to go down an incline into the panhandle. And this is an area that the landscapers that we hire blow leaves into. So it's a slippery slope covered with leaves. Sometimes they're six to 10 inches of leaves. So it's very uneven, slippery stuff, especially in the winter. And this is a danger. This is a liability, and I have said this for years, for five years now, this is the fifth year. Um, there should be a very short 10 to 15 foot handrail to help <clears throat> older folks to walk up and down this slippery slope, or the, uh, I've seen people bringing strollers up and down having trouble. This is a liability, and again, I would ask you to really be proactive. Something's going to happen. I just know it is because that gets muddy, it gets slippery, and it's a nice big slope that I have trouble, of course, you know, I'm 75, but I'm sure I've seen people with strollers who have trouble going up and down that. So just be aware of that again and please do something about it. It's just a, you know, thousand dollar rail, just a rail to hang on to. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Campo is going to give us an update on the uh, Haunted Ridge Trail project. All right. So, um, super excited that we started the implementation on the 15th, Monday. That's today, so it was last week. Um, um, things are going well. I got some photos today from some of the crew on the project. Um, it's moving along. They started cutting the trail. I do want to thank Eric for working with um, uh, some staff at my office, James, to get the right, uh, the permit to enter executed in easement, um, executed and signed. And um, to get that all moving forward, I know there was uh, a bit of a fire drill at the end, so thanks for doing that. Um, this is, um, it's hard for me to fully express my excitement about this project. This is the biggest project we've ever planned, and I feel super fortunate that it's in my neighborhood and um, going to benefit this community. Um, it's going to be about four miles when it's done. And um, it, it's big, so it's not going to be done this year. Um, but they will be working on it for this year. We were prepared to potentially work through the winter if, if the weather allows for us to. Um, we've taken some steps to prepare a stormwater prevention plan so that will give us the latitude to work through the winter if we can. Um, but we have almost our entire William Trail crew up there right now, so they're, we're, we're putting all of our resources on this project. Um, it's a really important project for us as well, so um, I'm trying to think. The other updates, we, I, I did talk to you about that we have a website where we have a landing page for this project, and we provide you a link. So you guys can have the, we can have it on our um, Marinwood CSD website as well, because um, we'll keep that site updated if, if the public has questions, it has my contact information so they can ask me directly. Um, and we, we are using, we're having some temporary closures on some of the fire roads in the area, um, Curlew, which is on the Nevada side, and Queenstone. Um, which is right here, um, to get material up and down. We're using Queenstone as an access route. So there's going to be some temporary closures there. Um, and then Ponte, the Ponte Fire Road, of course, from here on out is permanently closed. That, that trail that converts into a trail. Yeah. And 
ask you a favor. I've seen the park has put a couple things out, or Open Space District has put a couple things out um, via next door. Yeah. Next door doesn't have the wonderful uh, Facebook-like feature of share. Can um, they send me some raw things that I can? Because uh, I would. I. My point being is I would like to retransmit yep. your information through the district's next door account as well. Um, I just think the more, especially you know, as you're talking about closures, uh, but also just general interest, um, I think the more the, the information gets out there, the better. Obviously, I think the, the, a lot of people are excited about it, but a lot of people also use that road, so if we can you know, just double and triple shot with yep. uh, anything. So anything that they're pushing out, and I'll always say, you know, hey, from Marin County Open Space District, and then I always want to include a, a link to the web page that right. we're talking about. But whatever graphics that they're using, you know, I saw that they put a map. I think they just put one out today. We just created it today. Uh -huh. yeah. That one out there. Yeah. Um, so anything that, that they send me, I'll yeah. make sure it gets up on our thing too. And it was, I, I went in and I tried to do like some copy paste. It just, it wasn't coming out good because next door is not. It's just not a feature next door really. Right. No, I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you tomorrow. That'd be awesome. Um, I'll be out for a couple days, but right. okay. get it to me. We'll get it out there. Right. Um, I don't. I don't have any other updates at this point. Okay. I mean, things are going smooth. We haven't had any issues or concerns. Do you guys have questions? Or? No, I have none. Shane, I don't know. Yeah. Any questions? The only thing I would say is, uh, uh, echo what John said, um, the, the one gentleman from this department, especially uh, James Raves. Yeah, James Raves. Raves uh, worked really hard on working with me on getting the language um, of these two different agreements, the easement and the right to enter. Uh, you know, obviously it went through our legal counsel, went through their legal counsel. We had to find a place where everybody's legal counsel was, uh, felt comfortable with what these agreements were saying in terms of liabilities and protections for each other and everything else. Um, and it literally came down to the kind of the 11th hour there on, I think it was last yeah. Friday, I met over in their offices with a notary and we signed off on things. Uh, and uh, I think it gets to the easement, gets a formal approval from the Board of That's Supervisors right. yeah. like August 12th. Yeah. Uh, but our end is signed, sealed, and delivered. And, uh, They'll be presented the copy I signed, so I'm comfortable with what goes right. in front of them. Um, but it's a really good project. It's a good agreement. I think the win still for every everybody that's involved. James was very understanding of what our concerns were, and says I totally get it. Uh, it makes perfect sense. These are the same types of things that if we were on the other side here that we'd be looking for. And uh, I think at the end of the day, it was also a mutual understanding of we all want this project. So let's just get these eyes dotted and these T's crossed and get it going. So he was great. You guys were all great to work with. I appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Linda, any no, comment you. on that? Thanks. Okay. All right, Mr. Luke. <clears throat> uh, your Recreation Park Maintenance Activity Report. I'm sure you all had time to review it. Thanks, Sean. Yeah, I, I won't re read it. Um, we're about halfway through our summer programming, and I'm, I'm very pleased with how things are going uh, with the camps, with the pool. Um, things have been busy. Staff's been doing great, and um, things have just been have been running really smoothly. So, uh, very pleased with that. We, our our big uh, news coming up is is our summer brew fest is this Saturday. Hope uh, everyone can make it. Um, Three to seven, and we'll have, uh, I think we've got nine breweries um, coming, live music, and uh, some food from Big Rock, along with the barbecue, Silverman's ice cream, and, and child care. So it should be uh, a lot of fun. We're really excited for that. It's gonna, it's, this is a big labor intensive event, but we've got a lot of good staff, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be hot on Saturday, so uh, wear sunscreen. Uh, and other than that, we're, we're already focusing on the fall. And our, cl our, our classes, adult and youth programming, uh, preschool, after school program, and uh, trying to juggle all that while we continue to run our, uh, our big summer program. So things are trying to along nicely with, with, with all of that. And, and um, please do that. Are, are there any questions about the recreation uh, side of, of the report from anyone? 
No, I might make a comment that I enjoyed watching the kids load up on the bus. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> they are excited. Uh, kids. <laughs> extremely excited. It's just uh, got a real kick out of it. They're dragging their still along. And they're just Oh, that's the, for our, our annual overnight adventure. Um, a bunch of the campers go go to the, they're up to the Russian River um, for the for the week and uh, staying staying away up there with a bunch of staff. So um, as reports back, they're already having a great time. Uh, campfires, marshmallows, staying in cabins, and, and it's uh, yeah, we're looking forward to hearing them for the rest of the week. But yeah, they're pretty excited. Anything else about uh, recreation? As far as parks maintenance goes, um, just trying to keep things going. We had a big uh, uh, leak out in the park that the staff's been addressing this week on um, the main irrigation line, uh, which they fixed today, and um, dealing with some some plumbing issues in the community center and the pool. Um, just trying to keep things uh, tidy and clean and, and functional for the summer camps, and then uh, working on our list for what we're going to tackle as soon as the kids go back to school. Try to get this place back. Uh, Get the turf back green and growing, and um, put a whole bunch of things in store for for the fall. So, um, thank you. Uh, things are a little low key now that the water devils are done. No, um, <laughs> I I welcome one one less program happening at the pool, but you know, in their absence, we're running evening swim lessons. We have lap swim. We're we're taking advantage of that uh, of that time. Uh, yeah. Um, one big announcement, uh, Victor Sibaluka, one of our, one of our parks maintenance workers, has announced his retirement um, really? it, very shortly, and we will only have him with us for about the next month. And so um, we're going to be really sad to see uh, Victor. He's been here for... 28? Um, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, the playground is back here. Uh, is it 28? Yeah, he's our playground he's inspector, a he's a certified sure. applicator, is a, it's been, a, I, I don't know if it's been 28, uh, maybe 26, 28, for some reason I think it was, I think he was looking at how he's fallen short of 30, but at any rate, he's been here for 25 plus years, the institutional knowledge, the skills knowledge, uh, I mean, Victor's an asset, and as you guys know, uh, uh, contrary to commentary from time to time. Those three guys are much more than just landscapers. Uh, they do everything from right. fixing plumbing to toilets to building things to landscaping to maintenance of uh, you know building fences for the fire department. Uh, you know, and Victor obviously has been a, a key cog. He is leaving the state. Uh, if you see him, I encourage you to by all means wish him well. Uh, you say he's leaving the state? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he uh, everything moved pretty quickly for him. Uh, he didn't anticipate it happening quite this quickly. I think he was anticipating another year and a half or so, but uh, just some circumstances uh, for him uh, uh, pushing him out. So he's retiring a little bit earlier than he had originally wanted to, uh, but uh, good for him. This is all a good thing for him at the end of the day. But yeah, so Luke uh, has got his hands full trying to you know that's uh, not an easy position to fill, and it certainly won't be filled with the 25 plus years of institutional knowledge that Victor had, luckily. I mean, we have Marco, we have Best of Honor, both great, who've been here for 16 and 25 plus years, respectively, as well. Uh, so that helps. Uh, all the same, you, you lose somebody like that, uh, you, you never know exactly what, you, what you've lost until you realize that, oh yeah, Victor's one of you all about this. Um, Obviously, Luke is sucking up as much as he can. Those guys, uh, you know, having some sit downs with them, let them, you know, hey, I want you to think about the things that are Victor's tasks. We need to make sure we know exactly what all of those things are. If he's the only person who knows where this specific junction box is, let's make sure we know where it is. So, uh, but at any rate, I wish him well. Um, uh, You're going to see the new maintenance facility. I know that is actually <laughs> well, up here. that's yeah. actually incredibly disappointing yeah, to me, yeah. uh, John. To be honest <laughs> with you, uh, it's incredibly dis disheartening to me that he won't ever get to really appreciate that or, or utilize it. Uh, with that said, I mean he's a great employee. He's an even better person, and we're going to miss out on.
is irrelevant. If we could just make a list of all the certifications that he has that that we would need to. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we've already got that all. Yeah. yeah and do we do? Are we covered on all fronts, or do we? Need um, yeah, I mean, as far as what we're required uh, to have and, and who has what, yeah, um, it, yeah, he, Victor had um, a lot of the educational add-ons and certifications, but um, as far as what, yeah, we've, we've got all that pretty much covered and we'll, we'll be working on getting some of the other crew, you know, filling in where, where Victor had the only things, but yeah, definitely. Is he a retirement party kind of guy? No. <laughs> um, We'll, we'll force him to do something, but yeah. uh, he's not gonna. He's not gonna want to have a big, a big hurrah. Um, uh, we'll certainly do something internal amongst our staff and recognize him and this, uh, invite out as much as he is comfortable with. Um, but uh, this is moving very quickly for him. He's literally going to be out of the state almost the day after his final day of appointment. Wow, where's he yeah. moving? Um, uh, what state? Uh, he's moving to Arizona. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would, uh, especially you, as Miller knows him well, and the rest of you know well, I encourage you to hunt him down and have a talk with him. I, uh, it's, uh, it, 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 he's got property down there. He's got family down there already. He, uh, I, you know, it, it's good for him. But uh, it, it came much quicker than anybody uh, himself, especially anticipated. Mm -hmm. so. hey, have you guys had discussions about the recruitment process? Yeah, we're, we're um, all in working on trying to get that all together so we can, uh, I'm hoping to have Victor around to help train his, not replacement, but the you know, new staff. So um, that's that's a top priority right now for sure. I you, you were thinking of hiring somebody that quickly. Well, I mean, we'll see what happens, but, uh, and, you know, um, that would that would be nice if he was able to be part of that process, but um, to be seen, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, and any uh, recruitment resources you guys might have, I think it'd probably be better to hit up, uh, I, I don't know if the open space district would be the, I don't know how comparable some of your maintenance folks are to what our guys do. Um, it's kind of a specialized it thing. Is. So, you know, Luke's got some avenues uh, and outlets uh, that are kind of specific to, you know, park maintenance and things like that. But it's not like you're going on to Indeed to place that way. Definitely send the job description out though. To me, I'd like I could Great. circulate it. Yeah. Great. Yeah, no, I'll definitely hit you guys up. Yeah, once we have something uh, finalized for sure. Yeah. Yes, Linda. Um, first of all, I, I think it was Victor that fixed the big gate to the maintenance shed. Was it Victor that put uh, that together? It was the full staff worked on that. Oh, because one by one day I walked by and he was working on it. Yeah. Anyways, that's great. I'm so glad you did that because that was just ready to, it was rotting. Um, so thank you for doing that. One thing I noticed, again, while walking dog, um, from the Gaga pit over in front of the tennis courts, there's about a 40-foot area that's getting longer and longer and longer by the week and it's getting wider and wider. It's probably about eight to 10 feet wide of dirt. And part of it, I think, is because of the park maintenance workers, their little, uh, I don't know, their little utility vehicles driving along there in front of the tennis courts. But with kids playing and a lot of people walking, that is a dirt path. And I've walked by there and I've seen the kids from the camps playing in the dirt. I mean, they're not, they don't want to be in the dirt, they're in the gaga pit, and there's dirt and dirt and dirt. It's just blowing everywhere, and they're breathing in the dirt, and I think it's very, very hazardous. And I was just thinking maybe, you don't want to put down gravel, but maybe you could put some really, really nice uh, ground cover um, wood chips. Not big shingles, but if you have some small wood chips, that would be great because this area is, like I said, it's at least 40 feet long and about 10 feet wide and it's getting worse and worse. Plus, it also gets very, very muddy when the adjacent area gets watered. You know, there's less and less grass, but the grass is still being watered along with this big muddy dirt area and I'm sick and tired of getting mud in my shoes. Okay, anyways, that's it. Thank you. Okay, well, uh... Is there any request for 
future agenda item. And can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. A second? All in favor? Aye. Thank you all. Just to uh, clarify that uh, amendment will go on to the board uh, packet for uh, their August meeting.